Hey everybody, it's Jason and Campbell Homes. I'm so glad that y'all tuned in today to take a look at another one of our houses. We're excited to show you today. We're back in Cumberland Ridge. Cumberland Ridge, remember, it's, uh, we showed you a couple up towards the front. We're more deeper into the subdivision. Actually, just uh, two houses over from their primitive park, which is a public park for just residents here. Cumberland Ridge, it's in, uh, we're in Cherokee County. Uh, we are in Bullard ISD. Uh, here at uh, uh, Cumberland Ridge, you got access to the boat ramp is up towards the front that you can go in and put your boat in. They've also got boat storage as well, too. So private community, there is HOA here and everything, but very reasonable on that side of it, too, for what you get out of this nice neighborhood. And you notice, very, very quiet, too, is also on that part of it. This house is very similar to one of them that we showed y'all that was over on Treasure Cove. It had that five bedrooms, but what it was was it was there was a fifth bedroom up over the garage. Uh, and we took that out, okay? So, changed a couple things. Bright white, so we did not do masonry around this house. So the entire house is covered with James Hardy 50 year warranty Hardy board exterior. So the board and bat is something that we're just huge fans of. You can see the vertical there, going up into the gables here on the front. Uh, all the eaves and soffits, of course, and everything. Everything's James Hardy on the outside of it. Um, very, very cool, the cedar look of it over there. But at the same time, too, y'all remember this porch that we showed y'all on the very beginning of that other house? It had not been stained yet, so you couldn't really get the good feel of it. But these big, big 8 by 8 cedars all across here. The beams that come up here on this side of it, too. And then the one by 6 But now, at least here, we're getting very close to this house being finished. We've got stain on these. Where the other ones, you couldn't really see the stain, so it really stands out. Especially when you come up underneath here, the vault. Remember, we have the vault over here and the flat over here. But this one by six, it shows stain shows so much of the character of wood. Uh, so it really stands out versus painting. You know, hardy board and everything. It has a texture like wood and all that stuff. So I mean, that's fine painting all that part of it. But when you really want to make something to pop, stain these ba bad boys here. These cedars here, uh, the one by six on the ceilings there, and up against that bright white there, really, really stands out. Recess lighting, of course, and everything. Pete Larrera did all the painting on this house. Sherwin Williams paint, of course, and everything um, uh, on this one. And way, the way he gets into detail and cuts things in and then puts the stain on, it just makes things pop so much. Another thing across this whole house with Hardy Board across the front, Tony Rollins and his son John, they've already done the landscaping for us. We've got a little more to finish up. So you see we already got a beautiful green grass growing. Uh, trees are planted already, but we got up lights, so at nighttime, you got the up lights that are across the house that'll shine up just for an accent that go across the front of the house to really make it stand out. This is a house that we have we just put on the market uh, with Matt. A lot of times we put houses on the market right when we start building them for sale because we think, okay, well, somebody comes in there and they may want to purchase it now and pick out all their colors. Some people don't like doing all that. So, uh, but what happens there is then it's been on the market if it takes us four or five months to build the house, people look at it and like, oh God, why has it been on the market for so long? <laughs> so this one, the one next door we'll show you later. Um, we built these at the same time, but we decided not to put them on the market till here, very close to the end, uh, where we're almost finished. So this one here, literally we put on the market, I believe, uh, with uh, Matt uh, McKeithen over at the uh, Excel Properties about two weeks ago. Uh, we're right at that 2,400 square foot mark. Uh, we're at $369,000 for the house and everything as it comes. Still got a few finishing features inside, but still enough that we would love to show y'all and see how this house lays out and the amenities that it's got. You know how we're a fan of big doors and lots of glass. So coming up here, you got lots of it. So this is twin doors. So this is six foot wide and eight foot tall. Knotty alder. Here again, those knots that are in it. That just give it that character and matches in with the naughty up on the ceilings and everything but this is called three-quarter glass to where we've got full glass going through there on that side of it hey bear um and so that really makes a grand entrance as you're coming through there and you can actually see both doors are operational but here again you can see right through there and there's the back door going out to the backyard you can see straight through the house so sit in here and enjoy your house and everything. It's really cool you'll be able to catch folks. Somebody pulling up or somebody's in your backyard, you gotta get out there and get them real quick. So as you come in, one big huge open room. So kitchen, breakfast, dining room type of thing. And then it wheels around. 
around right here to the living room. So here again, a big open space, 10 foot tall, 32 foot across this away. Front to back over here was 31. So neighborhood of 1,000 square foot of the 2,500 is right here where you're living every day. So, and then to go with outside where we had that painted hardy board outside, board and bat, that's board and bat straight up and down, vertical, kind of boring, uh, or horizontal, kind of boring, so vertical gives it a little bit more. But we didn't want to put it in the house. So much like the other house, we used that white, that brick here on the front of the bar and then on the front of the fireplace. So, but then we painted it. So now you're carrying some of the outside, inside type of thing again. So this is already set up everything. The raised hearts are set up up front here and everything, ready for TV. The blue thing you see right here, that's a sleeve that goes up to the attic for low voltage wiring. So internet, Cat5, RG6, things like that. Justin and them, uh, and Lone Star Cabinets, Justin Jason, did a great job with a good bookcase here. Lots of storage, some of your components, you know, your receivers, DVD players, stuff like that. VCR with a plastic cover on it. Uh, that can all go down over here, but it all wires into the TV up. And then, of course, there's lots of things there for um, pictures and things like that, but all adjustable shelving on that part. Another thing we'll notice in here, too, that we try to throw on everything is lots and lots of light. Look at that's a triple set window, another eight foot door, all glass, still has inset mini blinds in it, and then another triple set over here in the dining room. Okay, and there's a twin set on the side. So you still got lots and lots of glass in here where even with everything shut off in here uh, during the daytime, whatever, tons and tons of light. Lots of light that'll flow through here and pull things together. Now, like I said, we, we got the living room over here, foyer, kitchen, I mean, excuse me, dining room. Love the light features from Haynes. It's really cool, kind of like a candle, candle type of glass in there and everything. They did a great job with that. And then this big, big kitchen, really laid out. Open to everything, open to in there. I sit in here and talk about this. Anything anybody saying about me in there or in there. But just a big, big room here. Lots of space. Look how wide. That's nearly 22 inches wide and nine foot long of a bar. So we've got the carbels underneath. So you can put some bar stools right here. Be able to eat up here, sit plenty of people there. And you can tell too, of course, we don't have a backsplash in it yet. That's what the wiring hasn't been finished up here, but we don't have our backsplash in it. But, already got our granted in, uh, Craig and Susan Berry, Chrissy and them, take great care of us over at uh, Berry Granite and Marble and Airport Highway. Uh, Santa Cecilia here, and it's got the rounded edges with a 90 degree corner versus the bulldozer. It gives it a little something different, straight lines, okay? Outside, think about it, that vertical boarding back, we got straight lines. Here, on the cabinets, straight lines. There's nothing rounded in here and everything, so that straight line contemporary look on that side of it. Really cool that he did too, working with Todd here, was this island being painted this red. Very cool cardinal red. Had to modify this for our, uh, our farm front sink here. That white's going to stand out even more once Pete comes in and finishes with his paint. But that cardinal red and everything really pops and actually looks really good with colors that are in this granite as well too. Um, Appliances from Don's are in the garage, they haven't been installed yet, but obviously a range and a microwave. But while you're sitting here cooking, okay, you've got spice racks here, so you can put the tall ones here, short ones down there. And then here we have the uh, silver canisters that will sit down in here. And so any regular like ladles or different things like that, big spoons, you'd have those right there that you can use those well while you're cooking on that part of it too. Big, deep drawers that he did down here that I love. All the way over here, but right here just is a great example. Sorry. You got shelving down here, but because of this corner, it kind of limits things. So here is a great example of use of space. So this way, we're not losing anything in the back there. Uh, we've got plenty of there. There's double right here on this side of it. Same thing with this upper right here. Just Jason did a great job with this. So this is still adjustable, okay? But you can see the lines, the dots in there, but you can still got some storage here in this corner and it makes full use of that corner all the way back into it, as deep as that is. You'll notice here, <laughs> that's really clear glass. Uh, what we do here is the cabinet makers actually make it where it has a reveal inside the door. And then the same companies that 
uh, do our glass work, East Texas Glass, Curtis and them over there, um, that take care of like glass in a shower or something like that, they'll come in here and cut a piece of glass and then set it in there. That's what's going to go in front of there. Just adds a little flavor to it, a little something different on that part. And then, if you remember, and it's, it's not being big enough for Christy with a camera, um, in here is this pantry, and it's very big, 10 foot tall. It goes in, and it has the bottom cabinets that step out, have a little shelf type of thing, kind of like if you pull things down from there, and either the little workspace, but it goes around the entire room. So as you come in here, you got that side right there, and then you even got tucked up in here, actually behind the refrigerator right here. So big, big pantry right here on the front of the house, right off the kitchen. But it's kind of tucked away like you wouldn't really notice it or see it. But that's the number one thing everybody never has enough of in storage, especially in the pantry on that side of it there. Now, as Christy's coming out, you can see all that moves around into the living room and in the doorway. Remember, we showed you one last week, it was arched. This is different, straight lines, so we're staying on the square. You know, all those things come into play when we're building and thinking, okay, what are we looking for? Arches, there's straight lines and everything like that. It kind of goes with that. Um, in here, too, I want you to notice the crown on me that's around this room. Uh, Juan did an excellent job in here. That's actually three pieces of trim. So there's a one by six up there, a flat, then there's a piece of PM5 on the bottom side of it, and then there's a piece of 4012 crown on top of it. So that's three pieces. Called double stack, but that extra piece at the bottom is triple. But it really adds a lot in there. And, and those are great to use and stuff like in here where you got something that's 10 foot tall. You know, if you got shorter ceilings, 8 foot, single crowns usually probably what you're going to be using. But there's a great use of double crown in here uh, on that that one decided and works with Todd on that part of it too. Now, this house, like we said earlier, four full bedrooms, two full baths, and one half. On this side, uh, we've got Three bedrooms. I'm <laughs> counting. <laughs> we got three of the bedrooms uh, and one of the bathrooms. So all three of these bedrooms over here uh, are all sharing together. The front bedroom here is 10 foot tall. It's very big. This is really and truly without that corner over there in a set. It's never the size of a master in there because this is like 14 by 16 foot in an extra. Of course, it does have a closet that pops out to it. Double doors into that. The DW347 trim that we use a lot of times that matches up with our six inch base, kind of complement each other on that part of it. But still have, well, Juan uh, comes back in and puts the bar, remember 42 and 84 in the shoe boxes. But still a very big room and also 10 foot tall. So it still has single crown in here just because it's a bedroom on that side of it. Went with a more simple door, two panels. No be lines in this one because we've got so much outside, they didn't want to overdo it. So, a little bit more simple door, but remember, straight line. It doesn't have the arch, so but to keep with that. And you can see, as you're looking through there, you're down the hall, here's a bedroom to the left, a bedroom on the end, and then a bathroom. So here, we've got another bedroom. And these bedrooms, like I said, this is what's so cool about the layout of this. And I'm sorry for the echo. Once we get floors in here, we won't have as much echo. But... <laughs> Things coming that way. And you'll see the tile guy here in just a second. This room's 12 foot by 13 foot. So here again, for extra bedrooms, this is no little cookie cutter 10 by 10 room, anything like that. This is really pulling things together. Again, just like the other one, big closet, shoe box in the middle on that side of it. Crown molding throughout here too, on that side of it too. Remember, we always hang everything up here. So everything's up high, ready to hang TVs. So as we come through, we've already looked at one room. Two rooms, we come down the hallway, we got a little storage closet. Just like that last house we showed y'all over in Emerald Bay, it was really awesome. Uh, lots and lots of closets. We got a big, deep, deep closet in here for this. And then we've got coming into this bathroom. <laughs> the bathroom's made up. Now we did two sinks, obviously, because there's three bedrooms sharing this. So two sinks with the culture marble inset and everything on that part of it. Todd's coming with the mirrors on there. Upper cabinets. A separated area here. There'll be a door here. We have to take it off because of the shower. There'll be a separated door here. So privacy if someone's using a restroom or taking a shower or a bath. But then somebody's still be in here brushing their teeth. That type of thing. And here again, try to use every little spot. See how that insets into the wall? Every little spot for more storage. Adjustable shelving, more linens. 
you got three girls and they're on this side of the house sharing this one bathroom, we'll need more of those. Really cool here, you get to see this too. And look here, we're in Bullard, Texas, and this was made in Italy. <laughs> All right, look how pretty that is. It's a slate tile. A very pretty, it's got a lot of veins in it, every one of them. Ooh, look at that one. Look at that. I mean, and that's what's going in the floor here. We got wood floor going on where we're at, but the tile cassetter's here. You meet him here in just a minute. But this is what's going in his bathroom. But just look at the texture and the veins and everything on that kind of stuff. Isn't that pretty? That's what's going to be going in there on that part. And then, of course, we're down at the end of the hall, and then we've got another bedroom. We did a little inset with that closet, so see the door's not swinging into a room. So what you got here, now you got a whole room to use. So in here, we're 13 foot by 13 foot extra bedroom. So good, good size extra rooms. There's three on this side of the house like we talked about. And a very big walk-in closet versus the other ones. You walk in and you still got that shoe box, but you got a 42 and an 84 over there and a 42 and an 84 over here. So again, Big, big extra rooms. You're really trying to find houses that have a lot of room for your kiddos, uh, things like that. When you need a four bedroom house, that becomes a little difficult sometimes. So take those things into consideration when we're designing and trying to get square foot room. It helps a whole lot with that. Now as we come back through here, you'll notice something I'm gonna point out on the other side of the house, but I'll throw it out there to you here in just a minute. You notice in the ceiling, there's a return grill here. <clears throat> So, Travis Evans, Four Seasons Eating There, and uh, Dana, uh, awesome couple that we work with and everything, and then Trevor. But what we try to do is, they're going to be a return here, and I'll show you one on the other side of the house. you got to balance this house, okay? If, if, if we only have one over there, everybody's going to be hot over here. <laughs> so, little things like that, you'll see all through the house, more than one. That makes a huge difference on those type of things. As you come around that corner of Christie, just look at the size of this room. Like I said, we're pushing close to a thousand square foot. Just here in your main living area, where you're at all the time, where you're living at all the time, and everything. The 10 foot tall helps tremendously. The big windows help even more. So it just moves and flows really good through here to make a very big house. Christy left the door open. We were raised in the barn. Mm -hmm, I did. Um, so as we go through here, you see again, square not arched. As we go through here, this is very, very similar to the one we showed you. It has that really, really cool master round layout here that we're going to walk in in just a second. Return grills here. Remember, I mentioned that one over there. We got one over here. Balancing the house. You know, you don't want to run your air conditioner 24 hours a day. And this side of the house is 70, but that side of the house is 76. So little things like this to help tremendously on pulling that together. Now, as we come through here to the right to the garage, you see the garage. Um, our, our garages, they got plywood and anything like that. But as you come through here, you got this cool, cool, put together area right here. Okay? Mud bench. So you come in, and you can sit down real quick and take your boots off, put your boots underneath there, hang your coat up. Once our coat hooks are up there, hang your coat up there and that kind of stuff. If you need to go to the restroom, right off into the utility room there. We don't have our light bulbs in there just yet or whatever, but you can see it at least and nothing else, Christy. We did something different there where the vanity is, but we did some open shelves. Becoming more and more popular with open shelves, but just a little half path on that part. But this way, guests come over. They're in there having to get together, having to eat. They're not traveling in here to your master bathroom or your kid's bathroom. They're over here just in a private one like that and all there. Another door would separate right here. But as you come into here, from the little mudroom area, as you come into here, as you walk through, look how big this utility room is, okay? Here you got washer, you got dryer, got a tall linen, you got uppers, and you got all this room behind you to where you're not scrunched up, because those are gonna come out 32 inches, plus a little more on the dryer. So it gives you plenty of room to walk back here, but lots of storage here, here, even up here, you got more storage up here, down here, and then we got a granite countertop with a four inch splash, also from Barry's, that we did in here with the utility sink. So Kathleen over at NWS, the Hilton Brothers and everything, all of our faucets come from them and our, our sinks and everything, but great to have in here uh, just to be able to wash things out if you need to before they go in on that part of it. But the granite's a really cool feature for a utility room. You usually don't see those in there. So it's a little extra that goes in there. That ceramic tile we talked about, it'll be in here too. 
And you'll see some here in just a minute. Show you something right here that you may not have seen before, but just so you know what that is. <laughs> um, you know when a washing machine comes in here and it slides up, it can slide up here pretty tight. But a dryer normally would drive in here and stop because you got that flexible pipe. Well, that flexible pipe on the bottom of the dryer, what this is, it insets into the wall, as you can see, and there's a pipe right here with an adapter. So now when the dryer comes here, this, the, that four inch foil pipe, it will come up here and touch and attach to that. That way then the dryer can snug up against here, not completely obviously and pinch it, but it can snug tighter. So the idea is as, you, as your dryer comes closer, it slinkies up together and comes up into here. This then vents out completely out by the roof. Never want to vent those into the attic. Always want to go up through the roof and everything. But that's just a space saver. That way that the washer's not sitting here and then the dryer sitting out there a little bit. It makes a little bit of difference. So that's mudroom, utility room. Master goes down that hall, hits the bedroom, hits the bathroom, and comes to his closet. So remember, this is that really cool circular type of pathway comes through there. But here's the master closet. We'll have carpet in here. We've got the 42s and the 84s. We've got a place for long dresses. And we have three shoe boxes here, here, and one behind Christy. Nine foot tall, recessed lights. Um, be really a large, large room on this side of it. Now the door to this room here, you actually, it's got a left hand instantly. So you actually grab it and pull it here. So that's why there's nothing along this wall. Because this will be a main path on that part on that, you know, where hey, you can do some road hooks or something like that up there just to use the space. And then that flows right into, and again, the door opens, goes against the wall, and that flows right in here to the master bathroom. So master bathroom, his sink, her sink, toilet room, private, and the master shower. I'm going to show you that here in just a second because of what he's laying out. He's actually here working and building the master shower right quick. So you got the toilet room in there and everything on that part of it, an upper cabinet with adjustables there. Inset back into the wall in there is another vanity with the granite countertops there too. And then over to the other side behind Christy is the other vanity on that side of it. Now all that bleeds right into the master bedroom, of course. But, so as it comes through here, but look how much this light gives off in here. So in here, even with no lights on, Look how bright and light it is in here. The light from the toilet room, but, and that's called rain glass. So, rain glass is really cool. So it literally looks like, I knew that was a van. <laughs> so, rain glass, literally that's what it's looking like, is rain glass. But that way, obviously, you come in and you're going in to take a shower, you know, you've got to have some obscure glass and everything, but literally, you cannot cover that if you didn't want to, uh, and it's still obscured to where no one can see in and everything on that part. But the rain glass is a very, very popular compared to the old obscure glass. It's just kind of bleh. Uh, <laughs> now, you know, remember where we showed you where we countersink into the slab, the bottom of a shower. This is great that y'all get to see something like this and how this is going. Okay? So literally they floated the floor. So the floor is floated up, but it all tapers to the drain in the center. And he's got that covered up temporarily right now. Then there's hardy backer on the wall. Okay, so you got your sheetrock, you got your hardy backer. Okay, then there's a coating over that because you remember we're dealing with a lot of water flowing around in here. So there's a coating over that, and then that's sealed at all the joints right there. Then he actually starts laying the top. So when you look at that, and you look at this octagon shaped top, and what he's having to use between each one to keep that gap. Because literally, you can see his mastic right here and everything. So the next piece goes up here, but it sits down in there, but you don't want them touching, of course. So that's what all these little spacers are, and this holds the spacers in space, or in its space. So those octagon shapes, it'll go all the way up here. We're going all the way up to the ceiling over here on this part of it and everything. Just really cool that y'all get to see something like that of what he's working with in there. And you can see here on the floor, before he got started, laying everything out. So where you know, hey, I know how much material I need, where everything's laying out, any kind of deco lines that are going in there. So it's really cool to get to see something like that. Now that shower would not have a door. So when you walk around here and you take your shower, 
that we're not, not, will not be a glass door there. You'll just walk smooth around into there. It's one of those walk-in, walk-out showers on that part of it there too. Notice that obviously there's a ventilation fan that's always required by code in a toilet room, but we also put one in here right outside the shower. The steam coming from the shower, we don't want that coming and just staying in this room and it can't get out or anything like that. So it's always there. It also vents all the way through and gets outside the house there too. Now we move into the master bedroom. Big, big room. 16 foot by 15 foot. Hey, how are you? I'm good, fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm Joyce here, and I live right up the street. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I wish y'all wouldn't park. You've got your whole two lots here that you can park in front of and not park on my property. Can you 